I'm still not used to that voice. She freaks me out every time. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. Okay, so I'm gonna give a little bit of an astrological update. And I think actually I'll probably get us into child's pose. But before I do, I want to credit who I'm getting my information from. Um, and one of them, one of the astrologers, her name is Chani Nicholas. The book, You Were Born for This, is kind of a book they're well known for. But yeah, she's awesome. And then also Sarah Faith Godestiner, the moon book, who also had um, those little uh, moon almost like planners like a few years ago. So I'm getting a lot of my moon information from those two and also a set of tarot cards, but I wanted to clarify that because I'm not like making this up. Um, so go ahead, let's actually start class in a seat. So finding a comfortable seat, taking a second to acknowledge transition into this practice. I have literally spent almost my whole day in this space that I am in. So it can be important to really initiate the container that you're creating right now for the next 75 minutes we have together. Taking a second to feel the contact you're making with the ground. Where is there compression? Where is there negative space? Kind of where are the curves in your body? How are they falling right now? Relaxing the shoulders, maybe finding some length in the vertebrae, the spine. And we'll do one clearing breath together and three rounds of OM. And I chant OM to connect us through resonance and sound and vibration. But I also find when I start my practice or my class with OM, I generally tend to feel calmer and more at ease. And also when I'm practicing, I feel the same way. So I wanna create that for you in this experience. Inhale, come in, take a breath through the nose. And exhale, release it out, HA. This time prepare for OM, inhale. Breathe in. And exhale, release the breath out. And to start class, I'm going to invite us into Balasana, child's pose. So bringing the soles to touch. Knees can either be extended or you can have them together. Bring the arms out long in front of you. Arms can also come at your side. And you're welcome to add support underneath your chest, or if you've got a bolster or a pillow, anything. I'm gonna try and give a halfway mark so you can alternate your cheek. I know I like to alternate my cheek when I'm doing child's pose, especially for a long time. I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer. And then I'm gonna talk about yin and also nidra and also astrology. Uh, maybe not all in this pose, because that might be a bit a bit much. <clears throat> but first, I actually wanted to do, well, I'll talk about yin first, because we're diving into the yin practice. This is definitely not a full-length yin class, um, but we are doing yin poses for the first portion of classes. And yin is the opposite of yang. This idea comes from meridian theory, Chinese medicine, um, Taoist theory. Yin is going to be very lunar, so it's in alignment with this class. It's going to be darker. It's going to require you to rely on your intuition a little bit more. It tends to be more nurturing and more yielding in nature. There are three tenets or three tattvas that come with this practice. The first is to find your gentle edge. And I always say the gentle edge is something that you can sustain for time. That's how I define it. And sustaining for time can be helped by utilizing props. So do not hesitate to use your props. 
um, use pillows, use blankets, use towels, use books, use socks, like anything you need that's going to create more of a support system for you, definitely add that into the practice. Um, so find a gentle edge. The second is being still. And in the stillness, we never want to be experiencing any pain. So if you were taught to persevere through the pain, that is not this. We do not want any pain. We do not want a burning, a sharp, a stabbing sensation. We even want to avoid tingling. So ease up and out if that's occurring or add a prop or try to access the intention in another way. You can even unmute yourself and be like, hey, I'm doing this thing and like it's hurting my ankle. And we'll try to reach the intention of the pose in another way. Um, and then lastly, we hold for time. And I keep track of time on my phone. We have a halfway mark and a final minute. And this is just so you can more easily surrender into the practice. I tend to suggest um, with yin to kind of put on a lens of mindfulness because it can be really helpful to turn towards things with curiosity, with more of an adventurous um, investigative lens. Also suspending moments of judgment or expectation and trying to be present in what's going on, knowing that it's like this and that if there's anything that you're worrying about, um, to really try to be present in the class. I know it can be hard to suspend all those things though. So don't give yourself too much crap for the distractions that do arise in the mind. So that is that is the yin part of class. We are at the halfway mark here. So if you're on your cheek is alternated, you may want to switch. Um, then we're going to take just a brief break to go to the bathroom or grab water, anything that you might need to really feel settled. You might also want to grab a blanket so you stay warm, or if you have eye pillows, like maybe you want to put that over your eyes. Maybe that makes you too sleepy. So finding something that's going to help you be in the guided visualization part of the practice. I used to have a friend, we practiced in real life, not this is in real life, and we practiced in person. Um, they would always sit up during Nidra because they would just instantly go out and they wanted to be awake. But if you do fall asleep, like you're tired, it's okay. You can fall asleep. And if you read um, the Nidra book by Swami Satyananda or Swami Saraswati Satyananda, um, he's like, it's still effective even if you're sleeping. So there's that to consider. Um, and then just, I'm gonna talk about Nidra and then I'm gonna do the astrological update in the next uh, pose because I'm gonna run out of time here. Nidra is the guided visualiz visualization and I wanted to talk about Sankalpa right now because during your yin practice, it's a really good time to figure out what you want your Sankalpa to be, this present tense intention. And I am, I have a statement, you can say it like it already exists. Um, and we're coming up on the final minute. I'm just gonna start talking about astrology because it relates. So oftentimes new moons are a really good time to plant a seed of your intention to kind of get it in the soil and then, then it begins to grow during the waxing part of the moon when it's getting bigger. And then there's the culmination of the full moon where you kind of like pause and then like the moon starts to wane and it gets smaller and you kind of tie up the meat ends and then boom, the cycle repeats 28 days later, you've got time to try it all again. Um, but this is a solar eclipse. This is the final moon. Uh, a solar eclipse tonight. And a solar eclipse is also a new moon but it's got a little bit less of a reliable energy because the moon is uh, obstructing the sun. So it's just a little less reliable. So if you're like about to like start something, plant that seed tonight, it's by astrologers and um, magicians. Sometimes people say it's not really a, the best time to be doing that, but also never limit yourself. If you came here with like this Sankalpa that you had set in mind and you're like this is the thing I've been working on it I'm building it like set that tonight like do your thing um but I wanted to throw that out there and we're coming up on the last 15 minutes here I'm going to read from a document that I sort of prepared um for the next pose that we do and I'm getting a lot of this information like I said from Chani Nicholas and from Sarah Faith Goddess um, 
<clears throat> okay, so slowly begin to discern your exit strategy. Decide you slowly want to walk the palms back towards your chest, press the palms into the earth, come into a tabletop. And that was a lot of compression. So you may just be dying to kind of kick the legs out. I know that's what I like to do after a long compression. And then kick the other legs out. I was actually doing hero's pose during that whole thing. So my ankles are like, oh, but just doing what you need. That's the most important thing. It can be any organic natural movement. <clears throat> And then we will come to a seat. And I'm uh, I'm kind of dying to teach um, saddle pose. And that pose, I don't want it to be, it can be, just definitely find your edge in this pose that I'm about to teach and don't push past it because and honor your knees where they tell you to stop. Um, so I'm going to start us. Um, and does everybody have a support system like you like uh and i don't mean like a network of like humans just like either blocks or some thick books or bolsters like now if you don't have them maybe run and grab them really quick um because i think that you kind of do need structural support or i do my body is not let's even be enough and we're gonna start if you have blocks or books or something you can sit upon we're just gonna start in a hero's pose like this Spend the first minute in this pose. And then I'm going to add on layers from there. You can discern if you want to join me in the layers or if you want to stay here the whole time. And this is going to be enough. And if you're like an avid runner or a biker or a cyclist, like this might be, you might have a lot of, um, the muscles might just be really tight and this might be enough. So I'm just throwing that out there because everybody's body is different. Um, listen to that. So we'll start here. I've got my timer going. And at the minute mark, I'm going to suggest that we remove one of the blocks. And eventually, we may come all the way to the back. So to keep us distracted. And also, this is um, a pose where you know if you like to do just one side. So you could actually extend the left leg out and just have the right knee bend and then alternate at the halfway point if you find that to be preferable as well, if this is more something you can sustain. And I know I'm giving like a million options, but I can't see you guys. So I don't know like what everybody, what everybody is needing in this moment. Um, hopefully everybody's kind of set up in this hero's pose. And we've already been here for 47 seconds. I'm just going to wait till we get to that minute marker. And then from here, this is a good place to stay. Or maybe you want to sink a little bit lower. I'm going to remove one block and just kind of see how that feels for me and my practice. And I'm going to be here another minute. And I'm going to read the first little bit here on um, this solar eclipse in Gemini, which is a new, new moon. Yes, we're also in a Mercury retrograde. I'm not gonna talk about that, that though today. It's June 10th. So not only are the sun and the moon coming into alignment, but Mercury is also coming into alignment with the sun. Mercury is the messenger. Mercury is also the planet associated with Gemini and the ruler of this eclipse. Gemini is a storyteller. Gemini is a communicator. Sometimes they're referred to as a trickster figure or a shape shifter. Being an air sign, Gemini connects people through intellectual conversation and information exchange. So we're at the two minute mark. You are welcome to remove this block underneath you as well. If you get here and you're like, oh, I can't do that, go back up a layer. Um, this is the next layer. This is also a good place to stay. Or you are welcome. And I have this bolster that really is thick. So it's going to support me. You could also use um, blocks 
and then perhaps like a pillow or two pillows to create a little more distance or you could stack like some towels there towels work really great too bring that underneath your back and then slowly begin to bring the chest back and this may be the perfect place for you to stay the perfect kind of quad stretch this is what you're feeling or you could continue to bring the torso towards the earth let the head fall back and rest here again there's also the option of extending one leg or extending the other leg sometimes the body is not symmetrical okay and we're going to be here for two and a half more minutes so <clears throat> Gemini being an air sign connects people through intellectual conversation and information exchange. And if you study the tarot, the air is off, uh, often associated with um, with the swords, with your thoughts. So you can kind of think about that as well, if that helps you. Solar eclipses in some ways are new beginnings, but it's a new moon, like I mentioned also maybe not the best one to initiate or do some like really potent magical transformation because the power or the source is getting eclipsed sun moon earth are all lined up in a way that the sun or moon are obscured temporarily in an eclipse and the word eclipse comes from the greek word e-k-l-e-i-p-s-i-s which translates to cease to exist In a solar eclipse specifically, the moon, which is associated with our emotions, psychic magic, and the subconscious, is obstructed by the sun, which tends to be associated with our consciousness, our actions, our identity, and our ego. Insights may occur from within that that end up profoundly affecting your behavior. A solar eclipse can mix things up externally in order to wake us up. Be ready and willing to be open to anything different and aligned that comes your way at this time. It could be an open door. And this is the final minute of this hold. And we never want to stretch our knees. So if you're experiencing pain there, definitely like come up and out, come back to the block, adjust, modify. <clears throat> Again, this eclipse energy is not consistent or reliable power to work with. It's just not as steady. Eclipses come in pairs and they're about two weeks apart. So on May 26, we had an eclipse in Sagittarius. So that was the two week apart. And then also six months ago, around November 30th, there was an eclipse in Gemini. So sometimes they, talk, they kind of talk about it as like a full like season. Eclipses reveal what is happening in the background or the shadow or the places we are not usually usually consciously aware of eclipse energy can be intense it can be a time for breakthroughs and it also can be a time for just tracking and noticing and not projecting so we're on the final few seconds here and slowly begin to discern the safest way for you to exit. I am going to press my elbows into the ground, kind of lift my head, then press the palms into the ground and then slowly extend one leg out and the other leg out. That also was a great um, stretch for my feet too. So you can bounce your legs here, do anything that's going to feel like a natural form of release. Any organic movement you're craving, do it. <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna move us into a forward fold next. The legs are extended. I'm gonna teach Paschimottanasana or caterpillar pose. You're welcome to do that. Or if you prefer for a fold to do um, Supshabhatanasana, so also the feet to touch. If you do that, leaving generous distance in between your heels and your pelvis, we're going to do a forward fold. Um, sometimes it's helpful to remove the glutes out from underneath you. So the pelvic bowl is really tilting down. And then letting the torso just move towards your legs. If you're feeling pretty stiff in the spine, 
it can be helpful to put something under your knees. When I do that, my chest does tend to move a lot more close to my legs. Or you can find some support to put under your chest. Come into a forward fold. You may want to do one or the other or both. I forgot to grab my thinner pillow, which would be like my preference here. So just getting into your pose. I'm going to set the timer. Um, okay. And continue reading about eclipses. Eclipses reveal what is happening in the background or the shadow, the places we are not usually consciously aware of. Eclipse energy can be intense, can be a time for breakthroughs. It can begin with tracking and noticing and not projecting. Energy may be greatly amplified. Eclipse season will in intensify what is already present, which is kind of like the full moon in that way. Eclipses are about shadows and our shadows shown to us. Time to recognize and acknowledge your needs, provide you with answers, deliver information, deep, rich insights about fears, vulnerable places, and boundaries. Eclipses can be portals or a rocket boost into a different reality. Endings and beginnings are synonymous with eclipses, breakthroughs, or breakdowns. Solar eclipses specifically, and I kind of mentioned this already, the moon, our emotions and subconscious is obstructed by the sun, our consciousness, our actions, ego and identity. Insights may occur from that within that end up profoundly affecting your behavior. Heightened awareness may allow us to move on if you're kind of feeling like hyper aware. And it tends to be related to action taken, decision making, rebirth and creating a new. So the eclipse part, I mostly pulled from the moon book by Sarah Faith Godestiner. And then the elements on Gemini, I mostly pulled from the Chani Nicholas. And then also Mercury as the messenger. So not only are we in Gemini season, but Mercury is associated with Gemini. And so it's really kind of that duality. You can often, I often picture just like the twin symbol for Gemini. Um, and maybe you're like, oh, I don't believe in astrology, this whole thing I'm like ripping on. But it is kind of fun to study and notice what does kind of have a reflection in your life. It kind of validates that information for me. <clears throat> so traditionally, Yin is practicing quiet. That's it, I'm done. I talked enough already. So using this time now that you have in quiet to generate or start a relationship with your body. Notice if like a message comes up and you're like, oh, like that is what I'm feeling. I need to set some copa for that. Or like today I caught a 30 minute vinyasa class this morning. And for some reason, like the words, um, I can't even remember what it was. I am the slayer of doubt and fear came up this morning. And I was like, yes, that is what I need to set for my intention this morning. So like sometimes it just like pops up out of nowhere. Listen to those messages. Follow that. That is the intuitive reflective process we're participating in. Okay, we're a little bit past the halfway mark here.
And this is the final minute. And vertebrae by vertebrae, slowly begin to unfurl your spine, lift your chest, lift your head. Ooh. Remove the block from underneath you and do any counter movement you're craving. I'm actually craving like a little bit of a spinal twist, which maybe you're craving that too. Oftentimes I would do this movement after a long forward fold like that, I can feel like a nice release. Also, you may be craving something else. And this time, this transition release time is just as important as the time that we're holding. And for the last pose here, um, we're gonna do half pigeon. So come, and you can always practice half pigeon on your back in a figure four position like this. Um, but otherwise, come to all fours and then press back into downward facing dog. You're welcome to paddle up the feet here. It might feel nice and at your own time, at your own leisure. Send the right leg up high. Take any free movement you need to here. I kind of want a scorpion dog, oscillate my thigh around in my hip socket. And then level the hips and come into hot pigeon. Bring the right knee behind your right wrist. Bring the back knee down, untuck your toes. Take a moment to level the hips. You may want to put some support underneath your right glutes. And then slowly begin to bring the torso down towards the ground. Add some support underneath your chest if you need it. It can be blocks, it can be your hands, it can be a pillow. And we're going to be here for four minutes on each side. I was talking to, or Veronica was saying yesterday how a again class doesn't feel complete without half pigeon. And there's a part of me that feels like I agree with her on that. So I thought I would give us some hip time. And the hips can be a place where, at least in my practice, I found I can store emotion or I, it just is an epicenter where I have felt an emotional release before. So if that does happen for you, know that you are ready to turn towards that. You're ready to process it now. If there is like a memory or something that comes up, you may also just be in the pose feeling the physical experience. There may be nothing like that, but I do like to mention it just in case it does happen for you today. You just never know when it's gonna be. This is a really good time to kind of zero in on what you would like to set your sun culpa to be because we will set it, set it at the very beginning of class or at the very beginning of the meditation.
if you've kind of settled on a sankopa, kind of try it on, try the words out, try saying it a few times. Edit anything you need to, make it shorter. Change it, it doesn't feel right. And this is our final minute. And gently begin to walk your hands back towards your hips, untuck the back toe, turn your back, and just transition to the other side. Send the right leg up high. Take any free movements that you need here. You can flip the dog, scorpion the dog. My cat is just like staring at me on the couch. Get a mean mug from your cat. And then go ahead and plant the right foot down, shift the legs out. Inhale, left leg lifts. And exhale, half pigeon, bring left knee behind left wrist. Bring the back knee down on top of your toes, level your hips. There's never any expectation to have the shin parallel to the front of your mat. Your heel can absolutely be close to your pelvis. Bring the chest down to the ground. And I've got a timer set here. We'll do just a quick supine twist and then transition into the meditation after a quick break. So this is the final four minutes to really decide this on Copa again, if you hadn't decided. And we say it in the present tense, like it already exists. Um, and part of the reason I always say that is, is then if you're setting this as your sankalpa, it's going to help you make your future decisions in alignment with that belief, like if it's already true, which is kind of a powerful way to think about it. And we're coming up on the halfway mark here.
and final minute. And then slowly begin to discern how you like to exit. You can walk your hands back to your hips, tuck your back leg under or toes, engage your back leg, send the left leg up high. Take free movement that you need to, to experience release, kind of relishing in the echo of the pose. And then go ahead and come down to a seat, come to laying on your back, draw the knees in towards your chest, coming into this kind of, <laughs> I almost said roly poly pose. It's almost like a cannonball, but not quite. And then let the legs drop towards the left, right arm goes out like a T. These can be up or can be towards your right wrist. Just gentle, gentle supine twist. And then direct your knees back towards center. Let the legs fall to the right. Just kind of bringing the spine back into a state of homeostasis. And then bring the knees back towards center. And you can choose if you want to rock and roll up to a seat, or if you want to kind of just come up, roll off to one side. And we have, let's see, um, it's 9-11. Let's try to be back here by 9.13, 9.14, um, I need to grab my little bells to start. And yeah, then we'll start the meditation portion of this class. So grabbing any last minute props, blankets, sweaters, anything that is going to make you feel cozy and comfortable, not distracted, turn off any lights. Yoga Nidra is practiced in total stillness. In dreams, you have no control. Well, it's 9.13, I said 9.13, 9.14. Is everybody back? I don't want to start from now, everybody's back. Mm -hmm. Got a thumbs up? Yes. 
Okay. Yes. Thumbs up all around. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to start. Um, in dreams, you have no control, but in yoga nidra, you create the dream. The body sleeps, but the mind remains awake. Give yourself some time to become calm and still. Take a deep breath. And as you breathe in, feel calmness spreading throughout the whole body. And as you're breathing out, say to yourself, I am going to practice yoga nidra and I will remain awake. Welcome a sense of relaxation into your physical body, becoming perfectly calm and still. Feel your feet relax, your legs, torso, shoulders, arms, hands, all relax. Let your head be heavy, release tension you might be holding in your forehead. Move the tongue from the roof of your mouth, let the neck relax, the shoulders melt into the ground. Notice the natural rise and fall of your breath as the body breathes in and out. Yoga Nidra begins now. Now is the time to set your sankalpa, your resolve. Please state your resolve clearly three times with feeling and emphasis. Anamaya Kosha, awareness of the parts of the body. Now we'll guide you through the different parts of your physical body. One by one, I will take your consciousness to each and every part of your physical body. At the same time, you will visualize each part. Go along with me at the same speed. I'll move from one part to another and you will follow along with your awareness. The practice always begins with the right hand right hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth, fifth, palm of the hand, back of the hand, circumference of the wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, thigh, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, top of the foot, sole of the foot, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth, fifth. Now go to the left side. Become aware of the left hand. The left hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth, fifth, palm of the hand, back of the hand, circumference of the wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, thigh, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, top of the foot, sole of the foot, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth, fifth. See the whole physical form lying on the floor as though you are standing outside of the body. Become aware of the touching points between the floor and your physical body. Become aware of the parts of your whole physical body absorbing energy from the floor. Feel connected to the ground and not only can you pull energy up from the floor but you can release energy into the earth and that energy can be transformed be aware of the front part of your body 
deriving prana from the air. Feel the vibrations of prana or life force moving through your body. As a result of this practice, the physical body has become completely quiet. Become aware of the environment surrounding you. Experience peace and quiet. Become aware of the whole environment and the whole body, the whole body, the whole body together. Please do not sleep. This is the secret of yoga nidra. In the practice of yoga nidra, you are neither sleeping nor awake, but somewhere in between. Prana, maya kosha. Now bring your awareness to your breath. Draw your attention to your natural breath. Feel fresh oxygen enter through the nostrils and then leave as CO2. With each inhale, feel your belly and chest rise. And with each exhale, let the belly and chest slowly deflate. The spontaneous breath enters through the nostril openings, moves upwards and draws together to form a triangle with its apex in the eyebrow center. Become aware of the, the breath passing through both nostrils. In yoga, we say the left nostril breath is cooler, it's more lunar, and the right breath is warmer, it's more solar. See if you can sense both sides. Now begin to count. You're breathing backwards as follows. Inhale, 54. Exhale, 54. Inhale, 53. Exhale, 53. And so on until you get to zero or until I ask you to stop. Total awareness of counting and breathing. Continue. No sleeping, please. Manamaya Kosha. Now try to experience heaviness in the physical body. The body is becoming heavier and heavier. It becomes so heavy that you are unable to move any part. You are unable even to lift or raise one eyelid. You are not able to wiggle the toes or fingers. The body has become so heavy you feel like you are sinking into the floor. Now, experience the sensation of lightness. Release the weight that you've invited into your body and experience lightness. Feel the body becoming lighter and lighter and lighter as if it is completely weightless, no gravity. The body is so light, light as a feather. When your body becomes weightless, you feel as if it is rising from the floor, as if your whole body is drifting up towards the ceiling, floating. Now awaken the feeling of timidness. Imagine feeling apprehensive or even cowardly. You lack courage and can be easily frightened. You're nervous and afraid and sometimes paralyzed into inertia. Change the experience. Awaken the idea of assertiveness, 
Gradually feel yourself becoming more bold, self-assured, and decisive. Imagine being very confident in how you convey yourself. You are brimming with confidence the slayer of fear and doubt. Vinyana Maya Kosha, Ananda Maya Kosha. Withdraw your mind and please bring your awareness to Chitta Kasha. Chitta Kasha is the dark space you see behind your closed eyelids. Develop your awareness of this space. an infinite space that extends as far as you can see. Become totally aware of this space, but not involved. Observe it as if you're watching a movie. What you see is a projection of your subconscious. Now ask yourself, what am I thinking? Do not think, but notice the spontaneous thought process. Hear the thoughts without thinking the thoughts. Just let them come and go, passing through the frame of your consciousness. Continue to listen to thoughts, no controlling, no trying. Whatever is expressed, simply allow it. Now stop the spontaneous thoughts, reject the thoughts and create a thought at will. Choose a thought and think it on purpose. Choose a thought and think it clearly, continue. Bring your awareness to the present and make sure that you're not sleeping. No sleeping, please. I'm going to name a few objects and you should visualize them on the levels of feeling, awareness, emotion, and imagination as best you can. The practice of visualization develops self-awareness and helps to relax the mind. You should move as fast as I go jumping your mind from one object to the next. Do not concentrate on any one image, but just keep moving along with the practice. White rose, barrel, butterfly, shooting star, mountain, trapeze artist, toast, constellations, nail salon, mini bananas, compost, cushion, framed photo, candle, zebra, chess set, gymnast, library, carnival, roller coaster, duality, bandana, gravel road, maze, puzzle, still lake, a rectangle, lilacs, hammock, bus stop, I'm now going to list a few objects to invoke certain sounds, hear them on the levels of tone, imagination, vibration, as best you can. Birds, raindrops, echoes, footsteps, can opening, glass shattering, harmony, distance, Velcro, Woodpecker, baseball bat, cheering, applause, exhaust, wind chimes, piccolo trill, drum beat, dishwasher, forest breeze. 
Imagine you are walking through a garden with moss that covers the earth. Trees bend and wind, roots press through the ground surface. Little white butterflies flit in and out of the frame of your perspective. Continue walking through this luscious forest garden. Notice the vivid green ferns unfurling, tall sequoia trees with their textured brown trunks. Take in the fresh scents of pine needles and cedar. Notice the smooth white bark on the birch trees. Continue walking through the forest until there is a break in the forest and you enter into a meadow. There are little yellow wildflowers poking their heads up and purple lupine flowers standing upright, clustered together. Continue walking through the fields of purple and yellow flowers. Cast your gaze towards the ground and notice too the little tiny petals on the flowers nestled close to the earth. A tiny bunny darts close to your feet. The meadow dips down ever so slightly and you arrive at a wall of tall hedges. Walk the perimeter of the hedges with your hand running across the tiny fern leaves as you walk. Continue walking and your hand comes across a different texture. It's cold to the touch. As you begin to examine it, you realize it's the out out edge, the outside edge of a wrought iron fence. The fence is almost entirely hidden amongst the hedges. If your hand hadn't been out, you might not even have noticed it. Direct your touch across the surface of the fence and down the side. You start to feel hinges running vertically up and down the fence. Travel your fingertips horizontally from the hinges until you find your hand on a lock that fastens this hidden gate door shut. Imagine now feeling a weight and also a warmth pulsing near your chest. Place your hand over your chest. There is an old thick skeleton key dangling there hanging from a necklace. Lift the long necklace and insert the key into the lock. Turn it towards the right and the lock snaps open. Take the lock off the door. The door itself is now unlocked, but it's still very much overgrown with hedges. Even if it seems impossible, begin to push the door open. As you press the door open, the hedges miraculously disappear. Step through the archway that's been created for you. The hedge seals itself behind you. Visualize yourself facing a giant rectangular reflection pool framed by well manicured grass and tall thick hedges. Stare at the surface of this perfectly rectangular reflection pool. Notice its deep color and little tiny concentric circles or tiny ripples that might move across its surface. Continue to observe the reflection pool. Take note of any colors or patterns that transpire. Take note if anything is revealed here. Continue to be mesmerized by this beautiful pool. And as you stare onto its surface, two inky shape-shifting twins emerge from the pool like vapor. They are identical in shape, almost resembling the bishops in a chess game, but more fluid and freeform. One is fully black and one is fully white. One is more shadowy, the other is more luminous. 
One is more mysterious, the other is more direct. Observe the twins as they dance, shift and merge with one another. The twins pause. You sense a feeling of curiosity, adventure, and even a bit of charm radiating from them in this moment, in this pause. Then they shift colors to blue and orange, complementary oppositional colors, green and red, yellow and purple. You stare mesmerized by their sudden change in, of configuration. They cycle through the colors again, black and white, blue and orange, green and red, yellow and purple. Finally, the amorphous twins settle into this shape of a messenger falcon. With stern and comforting eyes, she extends one of her talons out to you for to take a scroll that she's holding in her talons. Take the scroll from the falcon. It's massive. You begin to unfurl the scroll, but it's too big for you to hold, let alone read. You decide to put it down on the ground so you can more easily unfurl it. But as you do, the scroll propels itself into the reflecting pool. It totally unrolls the whole way, expands and fills up the reflecting pool and fits inside perfectly. Now that the scroll is rolled out, you can see that the scroll is entirely blank. You notice next to you a giant lever on one side of the reflecting pool. Press the lever forward and then back. It's clunky, loud, and definitely a bit rusty, but with every movement forward and back, it slowly begins to shift the scroll as well, forward and back in the pool. As the scroll shifts in the water, image, images and text slowly begin to reveal themselves on its surface. The ink starts out barely visible but begins to become more pronounced and more legible. You realize it's a timeline of your life. The beginning part of your life you've already lived is very detailed and painted and think, ink. However, much of the scroll is shimmery and glossy. There are gold outlines that seem definitive, but then suddenly shift and form into another nonlinear loop. Walk the length of the pool and observe your life's symbology, animation, narration. Continue. Attune yourself with the subtle and obvious patterns woven into the scroll. Continue. Sit on the marble bench at the foot of the reflective pool. Turn the lever off. The scroll stills, the water stills, the scroll dissipates. Now that it can know that it can be called back at any time for reference, take a moment to feel the earth under you. Observe the fresh breeze slightly tossing your hair and your clothes. Notice too the warmth radiating from your skin and the sensation of mist slowly forming above the surface of the pool as it drifts your way. Notice now if any final shapes, phrases, images, or colors emerge from the reflection pool reveal themselves to you. Notice if there's any information here that you need to download and take with you. The amorphous twins emerge again from the surface of the pool, back in black and white. 
integrate both aspects into your experience. Embrace all parts of you. This duality, this symbolic duality. The twins shapeshift into a messenger falcon once more. It extends its foot out once again. Write the words of your sankalpa onto the provided parchment. Write them out right now with a pen or an ink or a quill, whatever is in your pocket. Roll the scroll up and nestle the scroll in the talons of the bird, the messenger. The falcon takes off and flies towards the sun. Repeat the words of your sankalpa three more times here with feeling and emphasis and conviction, deliberate conviction. And develop your awareness of the room that you're in. Without opening your eyes, visualize the space that you're in, the walls, the ceiling, the ground, your body lying on the floor comfortably. Notice too the physical body. If there are any sensations that grab your attention, dull, achy sen sensations, alertness, tiredness, there's kind of an ebb and a flow. The body is always changing. And it's not the same body you had as a child, as a baby. It is not the same body you had last year as yesterday. You are not this body. You are the awareness of this body. Now notice your mood, how you feel. You may have many emotions, but you are not these fleeting feelings. You are the awareness of each mood that passes. Next, notice your thoughts, the tone of your narrative, and know that you are not just your thoughts and you can choose to not identify with what the mind thinks. And before rising from the yoga nidra practice, taking a moment right now just to connect to the ground, to the earth. Thank the earth for holding you and creating this space for you to do this practice. And slowly draw the knees in towards your chest, bring the arms above you stretching and choose if you wanna to roll to the right or the left side. The left side is more lunar it's kind of in alignment with this practice, but you can run to the right too. Maybe you're trying to find that complementary opposition that just crops up everywhere. And using the bicep like a pillow, coming into a fetal position, sending a wave of appreciation to yourself for doing this deep study of self, especially into these deep, deep layers and also honoring the lineage of this practice with its roots in India and a long line of teachers. Um, and Yoga Nidra actually comes from the Tantra practice. So it's a different lineage altogether from Vinyasa. And also honoring the unceded ancestral lands of the Coast Salish people, the Duwamish people, the land that I occupy here in Seattle. You can gently Begin to press yourself up to a seat and we'll meet, if it feels authentic to you, with hands at heart center in this gesture that represents non-dualism. So the coming together of oppositional forces and where they meet at the heart. And I think it's really cool that yoga has a symbol for non-dualism. 
this gesture of this mudra and thinking about what non-dualism means to you. It can be non-dichotomy, it can be non-binary, it can be, you can picture a negative and a positive magnet connecting together at that moment where they're like, so finding the depth and complexity and then bringing hands from heart center to third eye and bowing forward to seal in your practice, honoring the luminous and the shadowy aspects of self, peace and thank you. All right, friends. Um, thank you so much for 